Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, I'm going to take a look at software architecture and being an architect in an agile environment. In other words, agile combined with software architecture. So if we take a look at most agile methodologies, Scrum included, of course we have the development team and we also have a Scrum master. Now within this whole environment, we also have as a major player the product owner. The question is, should we have a software architect? And if so, what do they do? Well, let's rearrange some of these around and take a look at the first aspect that's a challenge with having uh, an extra role of the software architect within an agile kind of methodology because the software architect must communicate and collaborate with the development team. However, the software architect also has to work very closely with the product owner. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you those examples in just a little bit. Now, the Scrum Master obviously also has to work with the software architect, in other words, to coordinate uh, story grooming and some of the day-to-day the, mm, -day issues that happen with the development team. Now, clearly, the Scrum Master has to also communicate and collaborate with the development team and also with the product owner. And so all of a sudden, what you can see here is that once we add that software architect, we have five lines of communication and collaboration that's needed. Now, in most cases, if you look at this picture here, you can probably guess things are going to be misinterpreted. Information or communication are, is going to be lost. It's, going, it's almost like playing telephone. And so, so let me show you the role or one idea here that I have found works really well. And that is this. Can you watch there? Take a look. If we start combining the role of a software architect and a scrum master, what we really get is somebody called a software scrum, <laughs> it's hard to say, software scrum architect master. And now that's not an official title. This is kind of a joke of what happened when I kind of combined these two, but I actually kind of like that title, a software scrum architect master. Now watch what happens. If we combine these roles together, now the development team has one communication point to that scrum master role and the software architect role. And as a matter of fact, that so software scrum architect master role has one communication point to the product owner. Now, in some cases, this does work. In others, this might fall apart just due to some of the duties and roles and responsibilities that a scrum master has versus a software architect. However, that said, in most cases, I have found this combined role to work really, really well. And so let's take a look at this combined role and see what the activities of a software architect. And by the way, whether that is a combined role or not, what are the responsibilities of a software architect within an agile environment? And so we know here's iteration zero before we've even started to code. In order to code, we need some sort of story and epic. And that's what the product owner starts working on in iteration zero, creating those initial epics and those initial stories. The software architect correspondingly notice that bi-directional communication and collaboration, more importantly, needs to start identifying characteristics and defining components and architecture patterns that start matching those initial epics and stories. Now, clearly, we do not have all of the requirements defined yet, all of the epics, all of the stories. And so what we're going to do as a software architect is incrementally evolve that architecture. So based on those initial epics and stories, those are the specific components that I'm going to define. I'm going to select a candidate architecture pattern based on the characteristics, the needs, as well as those epics. And this might be choosing microservices versus a service-based versus even saying, let's start out with a monolith to learn more about our application before going wild with microservices. Now, the three other things I'm going to do as a software architect within an Agile team is to start to diagram the architecture, document my architecture, architecture decisions and start assessing architectural risk at this point. Now this is iteration zero. Watch what happens as we start the agile process and go to iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, and so on and so forth. Now the product owner still has the same role of creating up its stories to kind of continue on in that backlog. Now notice as the software architect, I'm still defining components and diagramming and documenting my architecture decisions and also assessing that risk based on those new epics and stories. However, I have three new things to do once development starts. A, 
I need to ensure compliance with the architecture, working very closely. Notice the bi-directional communication and collaboration between the architect and the development team to ensure compliance. I need to continually analyze that architecture to make sure that my decisions are correct and also refactor components. It's amazing, but refactoring um, in most of my experience usually starts in iteration two to three. And so these become you know, technical debt that I, as a software architect, need to work closely with the product owner, as well as if it is a separate role, a scrum master, to be able to ensure which of those technical debt architectural refactorings for various components, breaking them apart, splitting them together, maybe combining two services, breaking a service up, how important those are in relative to all the other functionality and all the other stories. Now, here's the amazing thing though. So the development team's responsible obviously for implementing stories, but you know what, in my view, in Agile or any, any kind of methodology, but especially Agile, that development team on every iteration is really validating my architecture. They're validating my architecture decisions. They're validating uh, my decision for a particular architecture pattern. And so this collaboration is, uh, uh, is necessary in an agile environment as a software architect to be able to do all of these tasks and roles. So hopefully this given some insight into the fact that yes, in my opinion, an architect is needed and is useful in an agile environment and kind of showed you some ways in which that would work. And so this has been Lesson 30, Agile and Software Architecture. Again, this has been Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and thanks for listening. Stay tuned next week for another lesson in software architecture. Thank you.